Chapter 4 is short, but there's a lot of important topics. Interpreting side-by-side -side box plots allows us to look at multiple quantitative univariate distributions. Let's take a look at some now. Here we are looking at the age of STAT-201 students versus the distance they are from campus. And we have a lot of weird looking box plots here. You'll notice a lot of them do not have a median, or so you might think. They all have medians, but the median is actually on top of, and it looks like it's probably on top of the lower one. Uh, the median has to be in the box somewhere, but if it overlaps something else, then you won't see it. So that's really odd. The only kind of traditional box plot we have is here. So it's unfortunate when this happens, and that's why sometimes you supply the five number summary so we could see if the median was 19 or 20. So I think a lot of stat one students are 19, so it seems quite possible a lot of these might be 19. With the 30 minute drive, it could be that the median's up here towards 22. These are the students who live further away and you'll notice their box plot's a little bit higher. So lots going on right here. You can ask 75% um, of students who live less than a 10 minute drive away from camp are this age or younger, and it would be 20 or younger because this is Q3 for certain. Um, it could also be that the median is there too. This is not a good test question. Uh, this is the only traditional box plot here where we could say 50% are 20 or greater and 50% are 20 or less because that's the median right there. So that's about our only good traditional box plot, but we can compare multiple distributions right here and we can see which one has higher Q1, medians, or Q3. And we probably won't do stuff where they overlap because this can just get confusing, but it's good to know. You never know what could be on the test. If you don't see the median, it is there. It's just being overlapped onto something else. And we obviously could not ask a question about the median for any of these if this was a test question. Going back to comparing distributions using histograms, we can stack the histograms and we need to make sure they have identical horizontal scales. And we're lucky here because the range on this was the same. So the horizontal scales by jump turned out to be the same by default. And that is your goal because if the horizontal scale looks completely different, if I change this over here, now it could look like something totally different and you're not going to get a good idea. And I've told a few students this, don't know if you'll need to know this for a later project, but you can just copy the axis settings. It's not test important, but you know, it helps out and makes it nice and neat. And let's deselect the data here. There we go, bring it all back nice and neat. And comparing distributions, it's very easy to see which one has the higher median. Uh, you can see the median up here, I believe is a little bit higher. They're a little bit close, but if I trace that down, the median here is actually a little bit lower. It's very hard to see, I'm looking at it from an angle, but it's 50,000 versus the other one, which is 55,000. So I can compare the histograms, I can compare the box plots. It's not really side-by-side -side box plots anymore, but you can do a lot when you have the histogram stacked with the same horizontal scale. One last thing, I made these quickly, but why not add a count axis to both of these really quick here? So let's add a count axis, make them look nice and neat. So this is just a frequency or count axis on the histograms. Now you notice this is a massive time series right here and it's our last topic. A time series is a scatter plot, so it is a bivariate quantitative display of data. So it's just a special case scatter plot. We mentioned earlier how a ordinal variable is just a special type of categorical variable. A, a time plot is a scatter plot. All time plots are scatter plots, but all, not all scatter plots are time plots. This doesn't have uh, the month data down here. It is month by month data down here, it just says row, but this is monthly data. So on the x-axis, it should technically say month. So you'll notice here, we can see if there's a trend going through, we talked about moving averages, and that's just looking through how much does it change from month to month and kind of taking an average and creating a trend through the data. So you could imagine kind of a flow going through this data and you know just see the up downs and stuff like this and this is a bigger uh study right here it's time series and there's many courses in this but it's important to know that a time plot is a special case scatter plot and we could put a trend line through it and the trend line would just be trying to 
kind of flow through the data points. And the notes have some really good stuff on that. I'll let you go look it up in the notes if you want a little bit extra on this. But a time plot is just a special case scatter plot. And there's a lot of analysis we can do with things like moving averages, lots of great courses here at UT. And this is a very big area of study. Well, if you have questions, feel free to email me. Good luck. <laughs>